Hey, John here. Do you struggle with synchronizing your hands when you're alternate picking? Ever wish there was a simple trick that could make a big difference, boost your technique and really make your practice time count? Borrowing a technique from the world of piano, I'm going to reveal a method that could drastically improve your synchronization. By the end of this video, you'll be on with a whole new way to level up your picking skills. To demonstrate this technique, I have prepared two English style licks. And it's basically his trademark ascending and descending force. So here's the ascending one. And here's the descending one. I'm going to show you these examples quite quickly because you have a link to the tabs in the description below. So in today's video I have a clean sound just so you can hear the accents clearer. So the first sequence goes like this. This is the ascending one starting on the 8th fret of the high E string. All alternate picked basically going in each position of the A minor scale slash C major scale until we reach one octave higher. So it sounds like this. The descending one, you start on A and do basically the same thing backwards. So Learning these two sequences will definitely help your technique, but I think it's even more valuable if you do this on every string and basically covering the entire fretboard with the ascending one and descending one. That's the practice routine that we're going to look at a little bit later, but first I'm going to explain the concept that I talked about in the beginning of the video and what we're going to work with here is accents. So accents simply means that you put an emphasis on a certain note in a group of other notes. So if we have, for example, 16th notes, which we have in, in this whole practice routine, we're going to use one, two, three, four, so four notes per beat. And then we're going to accent each 16th note in turn. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. When you do that, and you do it in the way that I'm going to show you, you're going to feel how your hands really get connected in a different way. And this happens due to a thing that I call the spotlight effect. And that's not an official term, it's just what I call it. And basically what it means is that whatever note you're accenting, your ear is going to be drawn to that note more so than the other ones, which will enable you to find potential issues in your synchronization. And you can't fix a problem you don't know that you have. So basically this will reveal any type of synchronization issues and it will force you to slow down because it's going to be hard to sit there and fool yourself when you know that, oh, that's not exactly right. So that's why this is so helpful. And another thing that I've noticed both with my students and also in other guitar players, like professional guitar players, is that when they play something really fast, you rarely hear the first note of the beat being out of sync because a lot of people are so used to working on really hitting that downbeat the whole time. That's basically the spotlight effect in action. Uh, the problem is if you only accent one note out of six in this case or one note out of four for example in the in the sequence we're gonna look at today so this is a big reason why a lot of people run into problems because they're taught to accent the downbeat and just do that and everything will be good but if you do that and you go slightly faster than your technique allows and you can just feel that well at least I'm hitting the downbeat. It's very easy to lose focus of the other notes and you can't even really hear that whatever you're sitting there repeating is not really locking in properly. So by accenting all the other notes, it's basically like looking under the rug and saying like, oh shit, that didn't look good, I need to clean this up. But now you will actually be able to clean it up because you can see the problem, you can hear the problem, and it's fairly easy to fix. It's just a matter of slowing it down enough so everything is perfectly synchronized. And then you'll feel practice session by practice session that your synchronization just keeps improving all the time. So a few key points to keep in mind. You don't want to over accent. You don't want to do this. And the reason for that is that you can probably even see it in my right hand that I'm sort of changing my technique for, to do this because I need to whack the string. So effing hard. Uh, so you don't want to do that. So try to keep the accent just slightly above what you normally do. So 
something like that. And you have to be the judge of that, but it's really important to make sure that you don't over accent. Another key point is the left hand because you know that's the hand we want to synchronize with. So when you practice either this routine or you know whatever else you're trying this on, make sure that whatever note you're accenting that you just hit that left hand note a little bit harder, just a smidge, just so you can feel that extra connection between the two hands. That really helps a lot. Uh, and it also helps you to be more conscious of, of your left hand and the rhythmic feel in the left hand. So that's a very important thing to keep in mind. So hopefully by now you start to understand how important this technique can be to improving your overall synchronization. So the practice routine then, I'm just gonna demonstrate it on the high E string here. I'm not gonna do the whole thing. Again, you have tabs available for free, so you can just download those. So I'm just starting here at the lowest available position in the A minor scale. And I'm gonna start by accenting the downbeat. So one, so you go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four and all the way up, and then when you go back, you do the same thing. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, all the way back. If you're successful at doing that, meaning you don't make any mistakes, then you can go on to the second accent. Uh, and this one might be a bit harder because one, you're gonna hit it with an upstroke, but also rhythmically it's gonna fall on a, on a weaker beat. So it can feel less stable than the, the downbeat, so the one, and the three, because one and three falls on the downbeat and the eighth note upbeat respectively. And that usually feels easier to, to keep track of. So now we're gonna be in between the downbeat and the upbeat. I want you to make sure that when you accent each of these, that your foot is always on the downbeat. So your foot should always be on one. And I also suggest that you don't do this with a metronome at first. You just keep your foot going. So you go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, this being your foot. Uh, so when you accent two, make sure that your foot is still on one. So you go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's very important to do that. And also, if nothing else, Aldemiola will haunt you if you don't keep your foot going the whole time. So the second accent sounds like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and so on. And then you do all the way up, and then you go back with the descending version. Then you do the same thing with the third. So you go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and the fourth. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And the fourth, sixteenth, will also feel a bit in between everything because it, now it's going to be between the eighth note upbeat and the downbeat. But this will also help you with your timing because being able to hold your foot like this uh, as you play and accent the second sixteenth and the fourth sixteenth, that's gonna be very, very beneficial for your timing. So just a reminder of the practice routine again. You start on the high E string, you start with accenting the downbeat, so the first note of each beat, which should be fairly easy. All the way up, all the way back, and then you do that with the second, sixteenth, the third, and the fourth. And when you've done that successfully, you do the same thing on the B string, G string, D string, A string, E string, and low B if you have that as well. So that's the whole routine. So basically, you're going to repeat every string four times if you get it right every time. And if you find that you have an issue getting something right, don't, don't freak out. And it's totally okay to practice the second and fourth, for example, slower than you do the first and third. So you can vary the tempos if you want, that, that's no big deal. So the point is not to get all of these accents up to the same speed, because I think accenting the upbeat uh, with an upstroke will probably always be harder than hitting just the downbeat with a downstroke, for example. So it's not about that, it's about revealing your synchronization issues. So by doing that, and then when you go back and practicing normally, where you don't accent the second or whatever, when you just try to play the phrase, you're gonna find that your hands are way more connected. If you decide to do this, just do it once a day, and just get through it to the best of your abilities. But again, you need to keep it to a tempo for, for each of these variations, so you're actually doing it correctly, otherwise it won't help. But do that once a day and then do that for at least a week. And then let me know in the comments if you feel any difference in your playing. So you're gonna find that not only this thing improves when you do this, you're gonna find that your overall synchronization gets better, even on things you haven't practiced in this way. So that's the sort of cool thing with guitar or any instrument, I guess, that you don't 
really improve something in a vacuum. But it's also a, a downside to that. Like if you sit there and try to learn something and, and you're super sloppy, you can't really compartmentalize that. That's going to sneak into your, you know, the other side of your playing as well. So that's why I think it's so important to focus on accuracy when you practice. And I know we looked at the speed building techniques as well, but if you look at those, there always is the side of accuracy. There's never just, you know, oh yeah, okay. just play as fast as you can and don't worry about accuracy, that comes later. I don't think it does, really. Uh, it's fine to try to push it at some point, just to go for it and see what happens, absolutely. But spending too much time on that during guitar practice is not gonna be beneficial. Otherwise, it's like having a golf instructor tell you to like, yeah, work on your swing, just get out there and then just, you know, swing away and then, I don't know, it will probably get better at some point because something happens, something magic happens when you've done 10,000 shitty swings, the skies open up and the 10,000 and first will just magically be perfect. That's not real life to me. So whether you want to do this routine or not, just make sure that you apply this concept to other things as well. Yes, you can really ingrain this into your practice toolbox. So that's the whole point of all these uh, practice technique videos is that you apply it to the things that you are most interested in. If you apply this to, let's say, six notes per beat, you obviously will have six variations. So whatever subdivision you're using, whether that is five notes per beat, six notes per beat, triplets, whatever, you only have as many variations as you have notes per beat. So if that wasn't obvious, I hope I cleared that up. You can download the tabs for the routine in the description below and you have everything written out in detail. If you still have any questions or if something that's unclear, just let me know in the comments and I'll try to help you out as soon as possible.